All right, welcome everyone to the Whole Woman's Health interview series. My name is Brianna Wilkerson from Made Well, a coaching practice designed to empower others to be healthy and thrive in all areas of their life. So I am a health, business, and purpose coach, as well as a wellness advocate for essential oils. So I have my hands in everything because holistic health really, really matters to me, and I really believe about caring about the whole person and the whole woman. So that's kind of the whole point around these, this series. And uh, I recently started a membership community called the Whole Woman's Health Club, which addresses all these different pillars of health that we'll be talking about in this series. And today we're talking about spiritual health. I have with me Stephanie Miles. We are Hello. both in the Cayman Islands, but we thought I wanted to show Steph how to do the interview thing. So I thought, well, let's just do it on the computer. She's down the street, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and so we're just going to um, take this time to just get to know Stephanie. She is, uh, she's an accountant by day, but a women's minister by night. Uh, she, vlogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she has a blog called Favor Love Ministries and it's a ministry and she has a Facebook group. And so she'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, and yeah, so I've known Stephanie for a while now. Um, we go to the same oh, church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and her, she started out, uh, we kind of started our coaching relationship, doing health coaching, and then that's, I, think, I think that's when we really started to look at your spiritual health yeah. a little more yeah. um, and seeing it was holistic. And then, you know, now I've been a part of her journey doing kind of some purpose coaching with her and starting Favored Love. So it's really cool to see how it's all come to play. Yeah, it wasn't until I really got to know you and you started to talk about, you know, coaching and health and stuff that I was like, okay, I, I feel comfortable to tell Brianna what I really want to do, which yeah. is <laughs> my ministry, you know, yeah. and, uh, was when you were kind of like, oh, I can help you with that. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm just going to go with it and step out in faith. And all right, let's just see where this takes me. <laughs> and look at where it's taken you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so then let's get, kind of get started with that. Tell us the role um, of that, you know, your journey with spiritual health and what that means to you, what, you know, what faith that you're a part of and um, how that's played in your life. And then kind of like, how did that lead you to want to start favored love? Well, for me, I honestly didn't think that God would put me in this type of ministry. Like I wanted him to use me, but I just didn't think that he would use blogging and writing and this type of, of, of platform. But um, for me, I found that I struggled a lot in my early childhood with who I was um, in Christ, especially, and how I fit into this world. Like, I, I really felt purposeless <laughs> growing up as a child. You know, I really felt like, okay, I'm just, I don't have the special talents that everybody else has. I don't have a musical ability or a sports ability or any kind of thing. I was just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. So I was really getting frustrated with God to say, you know, I don't feel like God can use me in any other way. I, I would always look at, at other people and say, oh, well, she has this or he has that, but I don't have anything. But looking back on it now, I can really see where God was using the little things in everyday life to bring me to this point in my, in my career because really this ministry is precious and dear to me because it involves everything that I went through in my past. And how I'm relating that to women right now. Um, so I can see where God has used my writing, you know, from, from college days, I used to love to write. Mm -hmm. I had a really special English teacher that um, would always challenge me to write my essays in a better way or a, a better wording or better English or you know, and I, I love to do that, but I never thought that I would use that now <laughs> in my blogging. But looking back, I can say, wow, I really thank that English teacher mm -hmm. for what she's done to me and what she's put into me. It really goes to show that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you have this ability like this person or that ability like that person. What matters is that you have a heart that's willing to please God. Mm -hmm. And once you please God, he will use you in just an amazing way. <laughs> you know, he will use you if you have that heart of submission to God. Mm -hmm. That's really what I'm trying to tell women these days. You know, I really liked what you said around um, 
you having a heart that's willing to please God. Like that's what qualifies you. Not like always the abilities, not always the gifts, not always like speaking in tongues or whatever. And I think that's, that's really what it is. And I remember there's this passage in second, second or first Samuel that says he requires obedience, not sacrifice. Like we think we need to do all of these different things for, for God. And really at the end of the day, what we need to do is have a heart willing to please him, which sometimes is harder because sometimes yeah. it's not what we want, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for me, when I was growing up, I, I always, because you and I went to a Christian school, you know, we were taught the basics of Christianity and what it, <clears throat> what it meant to accept the Lord and, you know, praying and all that kind of stuff, all that good stuff. But I was always kind of just searching for that one Bible verse, that one Bible verse that would just be like, okay, this makes sense to me. You know, everything just makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And it would just put everything in order. And to be honest, I never really found it because like the whole Bible speaks to you, right? Not just one Bible verse or something like that. But it was kind of frustrating for me because I was like, I always felt like I was doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was just speaking to my whole low self-esteem issue because I had really low self-esteem growing up. And um, it wasn't until I kind of just got into the word and really understood what the word was, was really saying to me. The whole word was saying to me. And I learned who I was in Christ that I was like, okay, maybe I am acceptable to God. Maybe, you know, he loves me just for, for, for being me. And it wasn't until I understood that, that I kind of just sort of pulled myself away from that whole um, low self-esteem issue and know who I was in Christ. And I think that this whole ministry that I've created, that the Lord has created, <laughs> is really telling women that you are good. It's not what you do. It's not what you say. It's not it's not any of those things. Those things are great. You know, whatever a woman does is great. Um, um, you know, women are powerful and women are, women are wonderful. But I think the issue that I'm trying to get across to women who have low self-esteem issues is that you don't have to wallow in that low self-esteem. You know, God can bring you out of that and God can bring you to a place where you're actually happy with your life and you're doing something with your life. To He's God. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. I love, yeah. I love what you were saying around. It's not just like, you don't have to stay there. You don't yeah. have to. And, and the, the moment you believe that the, and anything, right. The moment you believe that there's actually a way out, that's when it becomes possible. But if you keep telling yourself, you know, like I'll never, I'll never feel loved or I'll never lose weight or all these yeah. different things. You won't. <laughs> And so the mind, the mind has a lot to do with it, right? Exactly. Yeah, the, the devil continuously feeds you lies. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. I always believed, like, I'll never be loved. I'll never be, you know, good enough, whatever, whatever. And the turning point for me was when I started to find scriptures in the Bible that talked about who you were, who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, the first major scripture for me was um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that says you're a new creation in Christ. And I clung on to that scripture for dear life for many years <laughs> because I'm like, okay, the Bible says I'm a new creation in Christ. There has to be something in me that's, that's new, that's been made new. And I, ha I constantly had to find different scriptures in the Bible to say, this is my new life in Christ, as opposed to my old life, um, my old sinful self. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I found those new, those scriptures that I'm like, okay, this is who I am in Christ. You know, this is who my new identity in Christ is. I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a new creation. I'm a, um, you know, I have something greater in me than greater is he that is in me than he who is of this world. You know, scriptures like that, they renew your mind and they, allow God to work in, in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, they really just, I can't explain it, but it's just that God does something in you when you, when you really cling on to those scriptures and he changes you from the inside out. Mm -hmm. The book that I would recommend 
um, to people is Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that book, that book did wonders for me. <laughs> it really did. Um, there's another book uh, by Neil T. Anderson. Uh, I think it's coming out of the darkness. Mm-hmm. But those two books really, really just hammered into me, you know, what my new identity in Christ was and what I could do for God to please him with my life. Yeah, I think it's key to, I think everyone, when you do come to faith and if you are very um, action oriented, you want to do things for God, but really understanding that you need to have your identity in him first before, you know, going anywhere. Exactly. So tell me more, what is Favored Love? Um, what is it all about? How does it, how does it operate? Um, and then what are your kind of hopes and dreams and visions for it? Okay. Well, before I tell you that, I wanted to just say something of what you mm-hmm. just said. Yeah. You said that um, it's important that it's important to know the basics and not just the doing part of mm-hmm. Christianity. Because I feel that when I was growing up, and my whole understanding of Christianity was the doing part. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it was, you know, I need to pray a certain way. I need to read the Bible, you know, for three, four hours, whatever, whatever. I need to, I need to do something in order to be a Christian. And I think that that kind of hindered me for a long time. Because it's not in the doing part of a Christian. It, it's great to pray. It's great to read your Bible. It's great to um, get fellowship with other w- women and, and men who are also Christians, but it's also it's also in the fellowship with the Lord. You know, it's about being a Christian. You are a Christian because God is in your life and He has made you new. You know, He has He has given you a new life. So um, the doing is great. But the being a Christian is because you have God in your life. And I think that that's where a lot of people kind of misunderstand sometimes. You know, I'm a, I'm a Christian because I go to church. No, you're a Christian because you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. And because you want to please him, you go to church. <laughs> mm-hmm. If that makes sense to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, which I hope it does to, to some people. But, um, but anyway, to your question about favored love. <laughs> Um, favorite love like I said it came about it it really came about um like I said I had no idea that God was gonna was gonna use this type of of platform but um it wasn't until I saw how you started to relate to other people through your Facebook groups and your um your own website made well that I'm like maybe I can do something like that as well and at first, like, I was kind of thinking about health as well, because my, my husband is also inter- interested in health, and I was trying to get him to kind of um, explore his own creativity. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it, it just appeared to me one day, you know, maybe, maybe I should start doing something about what God has been feeding me over the years. And like I said, you know, God has been feeding me these scriptures over the years that have really transformed my life. And I really felt in my heart that women needed to know this because I just feel that there's, you know, there's, there's this pressure on women these days to feel that they have to be a certain way or um, do certain things in order to please people or please God or whatever. And I just felt that if they just knew who they were in Christ, it would, it would relieve some of that pressure to, be a certain way you know and I just felt that that was lacking in 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 women these days to just know know who you are in Christ and because you know that make a difference in the world you know um so I I made favorite love and um I got with you and you started to tell me about how to set up the the web page and the blogs and the Facebook pages. And at first it was a little overwhelming, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but once I started to write and really sit down and write it, everything just came out of me to tell you the truth, Brianna. And I think I told you one, one time that I just felt like a plug had been released in me 
Mm-hmm. And then everything just started to pour out. Mm-hmm. And Favorite Love Ministries really comes about how the Lord has taught me over the years, what he's taught me over the years. And hopefully that somehow transforms women's life. And, and it gives them freedom. My main, my main thing with, with Favorite Love Ministries is that I want women to experience freedom. Because a lot of them, with, low, uh, with women with low self-esteem issues, they don't have freedom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, all, they are always pressured to believe that they have to be a certain way or do a certain thing. And it's a perfectionist mentality, right? So I want women with low self-esteem issues, women in general, to experience that freedom mm-hmm. and to realize I am this person in Christ. You know, I don't have to be like a Brianna or I don't have to be like you know, the pastor of my church, whatever, I already am because I have Christ. And that's powerful. You know, that's really powerful. And um, I think when you experience that, you're free to go out and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, that's a, that's a powerful scripture. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. And it's because Christ that you're strengthened and that you can go out into the world. It's not because I'm trying to be like Brianna or someone else that I can change the world for Christ, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So why do you choose the word, why do you choose favored love as the title of your ministry? Well, I went through different name changes. And um, at first I thought about, uh, I thought about new creation because like I said in the beginning, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 Mm -hmm. really touched my heart and made me believe I was a new creation in Christ. And I was like, okay, maybe that's a good word or something like that. But I really wanted to capture, and I I really wanted two words. I just wanted two words for my my ministry, favorite and love. Because I felt that if I just had two words, it would help people to remember my ministry name more, but it would also encapsulate what the whole ministry was about. Mm -hmm. So I I went to church one day and our pastor, our pastor, (laughs) he was speaking about the grace and the favor and the love of God. And I was just sitting there kind of just, I had actually tuned out the pastor (laughs) in and out, you know, in and out. I was just listening to him. And when he said favor and love, I'm like, that's it. That's it. It's favor and love because as women we're favored by God he works on our life right he works to do things in our life that shows us that he loves us he loves us unconditionally he loves us that he wants to do things for us every day you know he's our he's like that great father that loves his children so much that he wants to give them favor and help them through life and um, so when I heard those two words, I'm like, that's it, <laughs> favorite love. That has to be the name. And um, I just loved it from then. <laughs> because like I said, when I was growing up, when I was dealing with all my low self-esteem issues and all my other personal issues, it, I did not feel loved. I did not feel loved because I had that perfectionist mentality. And I felt that I wasn't going to be please God until I did something until I was somebody else or something like that. But like I said, when you read the Bible, you find the unconditional love of God. You find that he does favor you. He gives you grace. He gives you love. He gives you peace, gives you joy. He gives you all these wonderful things. And I just want to tell people about that, especially women. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. So what have you, you know, um, I mean, you've kind of talked about some throughout this time, like women having low self-esteem, conf- um, you know, just not knowing who they are and wanting to be like other people, comparison, you know, all that sort of stuff. But what are some key spiritual issues and concerns that you see the women that you serve or that just the women you know kind of struggling with? Like I said, I think in this – In this world, I think that women are pressured a lot to be a certain way. 
Mm -hmm. I think that they're pressured to be beautiful all the time. They're pressured to be, to meet that kind of wonder woman mentality. You know, I can mm -hmm. do everything. I don't need a man. I don't need God. I can be independent. I can be, you know, all these kind of unrealistic things that just put pressure on women every single day to, to fit into a certain stereotype. Yeah. And I tried to fit in that for years <laughs> and it did not bring me happiness. You know, I think people, they will look at, and women will look at magazines and say, oh, I wish I was beautiful like her. And they come up with all these crazy titles like, you know, lose 20 pounds in three days or something like that. You know, we're all pressured to look a certain way. And that's not how God created us. That doesn't give us freedom, you know. So mm -hmm. I think a major thing would be for Favor Love Ministries to kind of dive into that mentality and say, look, this will not give you freedom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Freedom is knowing who you are in Christ and knowing that God created me just the way I am and he created me beautiful. You're beautiful. No matter how you look, you're beautiful just because God has created you. I have a certain type of hair. You, start, you have a certain type of hair, you know? A lot of us Caribbean women, we talk about hair. <laughs> we have, we talk about how it should be straight, it should be, you know, whatever, whatever. But I'm beautiful. No matter how my hair is, you're beautiful. No matter how your hair is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you just have to accept that God has created you. Right now, I can say I'm happy with my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy. I'm no longer trying to fit into that mold. Like I got to be like this person. I got to be like, you know, I do not want to be a Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> yeah. You know, you see her in the magazine all the time. I do not want to be like Jennifer Lopez or anybody else, mm -hmm. but I am who I am because Christ has made me that way. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. You know, I can, I can speak to who I need to speak to and talk to who I need to talk to about Christ and be okay with who I am. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You said so much. Um, <laughs> so what would you say if you can kind of, you know, um, as we're wrapping up, just what, how do you, what would you tell women listening right now based on what you've said, based on what you've seen, how can they really grow spiritually? How can they really come to the point that you've come to in understanding your identity in Christ and in understanding your, like your worth and your value? What one or two things can they start doing? The biggest thing that they can do is to develop their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. really, how would they do that? Really take the time to sit down and spend time with God because that is what he wants. He wants to develop a healthy relationship with you. And that means spending time with, with him, right? If you're dating someone, you don't spend five minutes with them a day and say, well, I have a healthy relationship with my husband, you know, or my boyfriend or whatever. You have to spend time with him, really get to dive into his word, especially diving into his word and seeing what his word says. I know that I've never been the kind of person who followed a reading plan. I always like to just open up my Bible and wherever, wherever it falls, that's what I read. However you feel best in um, reading your Bible, whether it's a reading plan or just opening your Bible, like I said, or being in a fellowship group, do those certain things that will help you develop your, your, your healthy relationship with God. Um, another thing that I would say and really commit to it. Take the time to commit to it. You know, if you spend five minutes with God a day and that gives you a, a superb enlightenment of what God is and who God is and whatever, don't be constricted by time. Yeah. The, the main point is develop your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Pray to him. Pray, praying is also just communicating with him. It is also just developing a relationship with him. You know, people journal all the time. You journal, I journal. You know, we're the kind of journaling people. <laughs> if you want to journal, journal. But just do whatever you need to take to really commit to spending time with God. 
you're not going to know God unless you spend time with him. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are no shortcuts. You know, when I, when I was growing up, I would always watch TVN, you know, and that, that to me was not developing my relationship with God. I didn't, when I was growing up, I didn't want to get close to God, right? Because getting close to God meant that I would have to deal with all the issues in my life. But if I, I felt that if I just watched TBN, that was my God time, you know? But it wasn't. It was just me putting another pastor between me and God, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out what it is that you can do to develop your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Another thing I would say was really... If you have the issues that I've been talking about, read The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Mm -hmm. and um, Read Neil T. Anderson's book, um, Out of the Darkness. I think it's Out of the Darkness, but it talks about your identity in Christ. And those two books were just absolutely amazing for me. Mm -hmm. So that would be the things that I would say start off with. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's so great. Well, okay, as we kind of wrap up this, this interview, could you maybe share with us, how can people follow you? Where can they find you? What's your website? I know you have a Facebook group and a page. Maybe yeah. just share a little bit about that. Okay, well, I, I have a Facebook uh, page called Favorite Love, mm -hmm. and you can follow me there. Um, I also have a Facebook group, which is solely just for women. It's, it's just for women. It's called Defined by Love. And right now we have about 69 members mm -hmm. and it keeps growing every day. But we really, I really love this group. It's dear and dear to my heart because it's just, there's amazing women in this group. So if you feel interested in, in joining the group, it's called Defined by Love. And um, you can join that group at any time. Um, my blog is www.favoredlove.wordpress.com. So F A V O R E D L O V, favorite love. And I also have a Twitter account as well. Yeah, you're all over. I'm all over. <laughs> yeah. I think at first you were kind of worried, like, are you going into too many different things? I'm no. like, no. <laughs> no, it's, good. it's good. You just you figure out which which medium you want the best, right? And so, yeah. all right. Um, anything else you want to say before we kind of close? Just thanks for the opportunity, Brie. Yeah. Of course. It's so great to yeah. share. share. Yes. Um, awesome. Well, thank you, ladies uh, and men, if you're watching, for watching this interview. <laughs> Be sure to follow Steph at, you know, Favor Love. Go on Facebook or go to her website. Or if you're a woman, join the group. And I just wanted to extend an invitation again to um, any ladies out there who are looking for support in their spiritual health, but their whole health. Um, we have the whole women's health club membership community. Stephanie is actually a part of it. And some of her different trainings are actually up there that I've, um, interviewed her for or did different things. And so I would love for you to join right now. The community is 49 us per month or 119 for three months. And, you know, we have a lot of different stuff there. We have group coaching, one-on-one -on -one office hour, this private Facebook group, tons of training and resources in all those areas. So reach out, um, or go to my website, madewell345.com if you're interested. So thank you so much, Steph. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great day, everyone. Bye.